Hello and welcome to Clearview Television. We are reaching you live from Nigeria's capital city, Abuja. Another college disaster, this time in Maiduguri, as students slit the throat of an 11-year-old junior. But why? Former president said to attend Bielsa State's mega education summit. 90 tons of U.S. lethal aid arrives in Ukraine amid tension over Russia's troop buildup. I am Nkiru Obuli. Welcome. There is a wide outrage over an attack of an 11 year old student by a senior student at the Elkanemi College of Islamic Theology, Maiduguri. The JSS 1 student, Jibril Sadimato, was said to have been attacked by a senior student who slit his throat for refusing to run an errand for him in the hostel. Some civil society organizations, including the Nigerian Bar Association, NBA, have vowed to take up the matter and ensure that the victim gets justice. The Vice Chairman, Human Rights Committee, and Vice Chairman, NBA Barno State, Barista Yahya Dunoma, said his committee is expected to meet with the management of the school and see how the NBA intervenes to bring justice to the victim. The little Jabril is on admission at the intensive care unit at the University of Maiduguri Teaching Hospital has appealed to his parents not to make him return to school because of fear that he may be killed by the senior uh, Ahmed who was paraded by police um, Burno State uh, Police Command this Saturday. He said he had told his parents several times to withdraw him from the school to no avail. Now, the head of delegation, International Committee of the Red Cross, ICRC, in Nigeria, Ian Bonson, has extolled the support of the Nigerian army towards the attainment of its human humanitarian efforts. Ian Bonson gave the commendation when he led a high-powered delegation of the organization on a courtesy visit to the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya, at the Army Headquarters, Abuja. He said the visit has become necessary to discuss humanitarian challenges with a view to finding ways and means of surmounting them. He appreciated the support of the Nigerian Army and the protection given to the staff of ICRC during humanitarian activities in the Northeast and other operational areas across the country. Yan also acknowledged the long existing relationship and formidable bond between the two organizations and pleaded to continue the partnership. He added that ICRC will also continue to dialogue with the Nigerian Army until common grounds is attained. Responding, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya, appreciated the immense contribution of the ICRC in Nigeria's armed army activities, especially in the area of humanitarian assistance, training and research packages in theater of operations, units, colleges, and training institutions, which is said have impacted meaningfully in the handling of humanitarian activities. Police operatives in Akwa Ibom or Adamawa State uh, say they have killed two suspected kidnappers in a gun duo. The policemen who worked with local hunters in a Ganye local government area rescued a man and a woman abducted by the neutralized suspects. Authorities at the police command said in a statement this Saturday that operatives attached to the Ganye Police Division in Ganye local government area and the hunters also received recovered two fabricated rifles, charms, and 72,000 Naira cash from the suspects. According to the statement, Commissioner of Police Mohamed Barjay commended the Ganye DPO and his men and hunters for their gallant performance and directed other DPOs to rise to the challenges in their respective areas of operation. Spokesman of the command DSP Suleiman Ngoroje named the two rescued victims Abdullahi Buba, 60, and Halima Ishako, 20. 
This is according to a briefing by the Directorate of Defense Media Operations. The troops are said to have continued to sustain their operational tempo in the fight against illegal oil production and other sundry crimes through kinetic and non-kinetic means in the South-South Zone. In the military's communique, the defense headquarters disclosed that troops, land, maritime and air operations within the past two weeks yielded appreciable results and forestalled activities of vandals, as well as other economic saboteurs in the oil-rich Niger Delta region. According to the authorities, the operations were executed at different locations in villages, creeks and towns in Imoa, Ikwere, Port Harcourt and a holder local government areas of River State. Other locations include villages, towns and creeks in Wari South, Wari Southwest, Wari North local government areas of Delta States as well as in Ikeromo, Braz and Southern Ijo local government areas of Biosa State. Away from insecurity, the National Industrial Court has ordered the Nigeria Social Insurance Trust Fund Management Board to pay compensation to the father and next of kin of a deceased that had his life insured with them. The claimant, Moses Ikpaki, who is the next of kin to his son, Derma Ikpaki, that died in the course of his employment, dragged the defendants, NSITF, before the court for payment of compensation. The defendant had claimed that the disease death did not occur in the course of his employment. Delivering judgment, Justice Faustina Akola Olalere declared that the late Ikpaki's death occurred in the course of his employment. After perusal of the submission of both counsels, Akola Olalere held that the deceased died in the course of his employment. The court, in addition, stated that the premises which late Ikpaki was found dead qualified as the victim's workplace within the provision of the Employees' Compensation Act. The court therefore ordered the defendant, the deceased employer's insurance company, to promptly compute, calculate, and pay compensation for the death of late Ikpaki in the course of his work to his father within two weeks. The court, however, refused the claim for the sum of 10 million naira general damages. The judge held that the aim of an award of damages was not to make a windfall of excessive profits. The court therefore awarded the sum of 1 million naira in favor of the claimant for cost of prosecution of the suit as brought by the claimants. Traditionally in Nigeria, paternity of a child is commonly determined by acknowledgement, presumption or proof. The most common mode of paternity is acknowledgement. Once a man admits he is a father of a child, the case is closed. A man is presumed to be the father of a child once the child is born within wedlock. It is often said that a woman is in the best position to identify the father of her child. So once a woman identifies paternity, it is often a case closed. However, developments show that proving paternity is often not as straightforward or as easy as people think as rampant cases of denials, disputes, and uh, counterclaims of paternity have been making the rounds. Clairview TV's Chidima Okafo has more on all this all-important family matter. DNA paternity tests are unraveling a lot of buried family secrets. Keeping family secrets isn't as easy as it used to be in past time. Now, just one DNA test could change everything for better or for worse. Many children are experiencing paternity scandals by learning that the men they have always loved and cherished are really not their biological fathers. The perception that paternity fraud is high in Nigeria is not unfounded. Available statistics show that Nigeria has the second highest rate of paternity fraud in the world after Jamaica. Many men have been unknowingly raising children that are not theirs and to curb the trend, they are because for introduction of mandatory DNA testing at birth. For people's reactions, please come with me to the streets of Abuja. Let's say you have been living with a boy or a girl for 12, 13, 14 years and you are used to yourself, is daddy, my daughter, my son, and you just discover that 
stupidly discover that he's not yours or he's not yours. I, I don't believe in DNA and I cannot do it. We have, we have many examples, but if now we are talking of introducing DNA into many homes now. We are going to have many broken homes in which it will not be suitable for, for, for us as a nation. I don't think it's necessary as long as both couples, unless if they don't trust themselves. But if they trust themselves, there's no other husband and wife can live in a house or in a home. You understand? And then after birth, they now find it important or necessary to do DNA tests. Unless it can only be necessary if they do not trust themselves. It should be optional. Why I said so? Because it depends on the couple. Where there's no trust between the couple, that's where you should do such a DNA test. But if there's trust between the both of them and they are faithful to each other, I don't think there's any need for that. So it should be optional. Because you're running the DNA test, you're going to put yourself into more trouble. Because by the time you come to know, come on. Started thinking, but just have your mind in one side. If it's, if it's not, life goes on. According to research, about three out of ten men that undergo paternity tests are not biological fathers of their children. Deoxyribonucleic acid, also known as DNA, is a genetic material present in every cell of the human body. Except in the case of identical multiple births, each individual's DNA is unique. A child receives half of his or her genetic material from the biological mother and half from the biological father. DNA paternity testing is the use of DNA profiling to determine whether a man and a child or children are biologically related. DNA testing is currently the most advanced and accurate technology to determine paternity tests. Chidma Okafo reporting for Clearview Television. We'll take a quick break now and bring you more reports when we return. Please stay with us. Listen to this truth. We are growing by the day and our viewership keeps growing on our different platforms. We are inviting you to advertise your goods and services with us at incredibly low rates. And do you have news for us? Script or video, please contact us through our email address, clairviewnewsroom at gmail.com or WhatsApp line 080-650-30300. Again, 080-650-30300. Welcome on board. You're welcome back. Gasina State Governor Aminu Bello Masari is demanding an unconditional and reserved apology and retraction of a defamatory statement from the Chairman and Secretary of Abuja Chapter of the Nigerian Union of Journalists, Emmanuel Ogbete and Ochiaka Ogo in eight popular national dailies within seven days of face legal action. The governor is also demanding the sum of 10 billion naira from the two ESCO members of the NUJ for wrongful accusation with an arrest of a journalist in Abuja. Following the malicious publication on the arrest of a reporter with the summit newspaper, Nessi Omolu, there have been reaction and counter reactions. Kasina State Governor Aminu Bello Masari, who is alleging defamation of character, threatens to go to court if retraction on the payment of 10 billion naira is not made within seven days. It is fast becoming fight between the gentlemen of the press and the learning colleagues as the Casino State Governor has already briefed his team of lawyers. You don't just go to the press without investigating. I will now defame the character, unblemished character of an individual, only for you to go back to your bedroom and make a retraction, thinking that that will be enough. I'm putting them on notice that this is not enough. The retraction, the purported re re uh, retraction they need is not enough. The retraction has to be in accordance with our terms. The letter, as I'm talking to you now, we believe must have reached their various offices for them to act, and failure of which, after seven days, will proceed to file an action in court, demanding the retraction in eight newspapers 
and at the same time asking the court to make compensatory damages of 10 billion naira on behalf of our clients. Record that after the allegation of arresting the journalist, the energy apologized for false publication, but the Casino State Governor said such apology is not enough. The Bayelsa State Government says it is set to hold its first education summit where a 15-year sustainable policy direction will be adopted. The State Commissioner of Education, Janto Emela, who disclosed this while briefing newsmen in Yanogwa, said the education summit is part of the state government's strategies to raise the education standards in the state. The education summit, according to the Bayelsa State Commissioner, is to bring stakeholders together to deliberate on ways to develop the sector. Apart from the physical infrastructure, the commissioner said a holistic approach will be adopted to take education to the next level in the state. The government of Bayelsa State through the Ministry of Education has conceptualized the Bayelsa State Education Summit as the cradle of the new Bayelsa education sector to produce forward-looking ideas and vision for the next 15 years in a reliable, relatable educational plan and policy. So the uh, education uh, summit is actually how to ensure that the system is well streamlined for upward movement. That is education delivery. We want an improvement in the education delivery of the state. Baisa State boasts of a number of primary, secondary, and tertiary institutions with direct supervision by the state government. The tertiary institutions also have its course accredited. Last year, 2021, the government prioritized the accreditation of the programs run at our tertiary institutions, and we achieved accreditation of all our institutions. Within the same year, the Ministry embarked on two inspection tours of all primary and secondary schools in the states. We synchronized our findings with the contents of our annual school census report of very recent years with regard to among many other factors. Former President Gulo Jonathan is expected to grace the education summit. And in sports, Tunisia's Cartage Eagles will not be with 12 of their players after they tested a positive for COVID-19 ahead of the round of 16 knockout clash on Sunday against the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Several Tunisian players and Monda Kaba, the head coach, tested positive for COVID-19. Kaba was absent during the pre-March press conference this Saturday at the media center of Room J, Adia Stadium, Garua. Tunisia's assistant coach, Jalal al Qadri confirmed during a press conference that Captain Wabi Kazri and 11 others have contracted COVID-19 and will not be available for tomorrow's game. Meanwhile, the Super Eagles of Nigeria will face off with the Black Stars of Ghana for the final playoff for the Qatar 2020 World Cup slot. The draw took place in Cameroon, where the AFCON 2021 is holding. And on the entertainment scene, let's now join in with Fon Okon for updates. Hello, a very pleasant weekend to you out there. Welcome to entertainment segment as we bring you stories from the entertainment world. I am Ime Fon Okon. Nollywood actress Anya Dibia has described her husband and music icon to face Dibia as a god. The movie star made this known via her Instagram page while promoting one of his songs. Annie and her OP two face, Idibia tied the knot in 2012 and have two daughters together. It hasn't been a rosy journey as the strength of the marriage was tested. Keith Daniel has advised people not to have children if they are not financially buoyant. The poor me water singer said people who are not financially buoyant should not ever consider bringing children into the world. Their father of two shared part of the interview clip on Twitter where he was asked how it has been like with his twins. It was another happy moment for Nigerians, most especially as David Doe and Whiskey were seen hawking each other as they settled their long time beef. On a viral video, David Doe walked up to Whiskey and they both shared a very pleasant moment together.
it's really a great news as the music industry has brought back love to these two celebrities. And Nigerian rapper Jude Abaka, aka MI, says humility does not work in the entertainment industry. In a post shared on his Twitter page, the rapper advised upcoming artists to carry their shoulders up. MI, who has been acknowledged as one of the most humble celebrities in the entertainment industry, explained that he recently carried out an experiment and his conclusion about being a humble person is undermining. American rapper Cardi B has pledged to cover the cost of the funeral for all the victims of the deadly fire incident that happened in New York City. A wildfire ripped across a 120-unit apartment building in, in the Bronx, New York, earlier in the month, killing several residents, including children. The music star, a native of New York, is working with the major's fund to advance New York City to make sure everyone is covered and the wishes of their families are met. Several people lost their lives during the inferno in January 9, 2022. All right, that's all we have for you today on Entertainment News. Many thanks for joining us. Do enjoy your weekend. I am Imefono Kun. Back to you, Inku. Thanks, Imefono. And on the foreign team, some 90 tons of U.S. lethal aid have arrived in Ukraine amid tension over Russia's troop buildup on the border. It was the first shipment of a recently approved package of U.S. military aid for Ukraine and included ammunition for frontline defenders. The delivery followed U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken's visit to Kyiv this week, where he warned of a tough response if Russia was to invade. Moscow has denied any plans to invade or attack Ukraine. U.S. President Joe Biden approved the $200 million security support package in December. The U.S. Embassy in Kyiv said that the shipment demonstrated its firm commitment to Ukraine's sovereign right to self-defense. The shipment arrived hours after Russia's foreign minister and his U.S. counterpart held what they called frank talks to try to reduce the chance of a wider conflict in Ukraine. Russia had seized Ukrainian territory before Crimea in 2014, and the head of the military alliance, NATO, has warned that there is a real risk of a fresh conflict in uh, Europe after an estimated 100,000 Russian forces emerged on the border. Moscow has denied it is planning an invasion, but Pres President Vladimir Putin has issued demands to the West, which he says concerns Russia's security, including that Ukraine was stopped from joining NATO. He also wants NATO to abandon military exercises and stop sending weapons to Eastern Europe, seeing this as a direct threat to Russia's security. And that's all on the news. But before we go, a quick recap of our main stories. There has been a wide outrage over the attack of an 11-year-old student by his senior at the El Kanemi College of Islamic Theology, Maiduguri. The GSS-1 student, Jibril Sadimato, was said to have been attacked by a senior student who slit his throat for refusing to run an errand for him in the hostel. Bielsa State Government has said it is set to hold its maiden education summit where a 15-year sustainable policy direction will be adopted. Former President Goodluck Abella Jonathan will be in attendance. We also told you that some 90 tons of U.S. lethal aid have arrived Ukraine amidst tensions over Russia's troop buildup on the border. It is the first shipment of a recently approved package of U.S. military aid for Ukraine and included ammunition from frontline defenders. The delivery followed U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken's visit to Kyiv this week. Do remember to like us on Facebook, Clairview Television. Follow us on Twitter at Clairview Online. 
follow us on Instagram at TV underscore Angie. And also remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Clairview TV. Thank you for watching. I am Nkiro Obuli.